so yeah the last video fucking just clipped out on me but anyway here's part three um i was talking about peers but yeah just don't don't be a shit bag find your be useful to your squad and you will do fine on peers you know you got to get above 60 percent if you peer in darby they don't fucking recycle you they just fucking put you in a different company i think so it's again if you fucking peer anywhere peer in darby um, peer anywhere else, then it's like, you know, you're probably getting fucking recycled. And then if you peer in fucking, uh, Florida, it's, yeah, it's bad. But, hey, it's not such a big deal in Derby, so just, just knock it out and you'll be fucking fine. So, you'll go back to Rogers, you'll get like a dog axe where you get as many fucking hot dogs as you can fucking eat, which is fucking money. And boy, will, will you be able to eat, like, we talk about the food a little bit, like, you get two meals a day, and the way it works is, you know, you'll eat one meal once you fucking wake up pretty much and then you'll eat your other meal when you right before you go to sleep so you're pretty much eating two MREs really close to each other and then you're going all day without food pretty much you know so you eat probably like 2 in the morning 2 a.m. 3 3 a.m. maybe and then you probably eat like 6 a.m. so you're getting like you're you're you know you're getting fed there but then like the rest of the day you're fucking not eating man you're drinking water and that's about it um they'll give you some Sarah Sport too and they'll fucking you know don't eat that powder because it's fucking like you know it's it's a you know, minor minor it's an SOR violation and they can fucking recycle you for it but man I would fucking eat that shit like you know everyone would and you know it's just stupid just but don't get caught doing it again no negative attention to yourself but anyway yeah you'll you'll fucking get like like two hours maybe one hour sleep in the planting base of Darby and this shit sucks but you know make sure you got your sleeping bag you know like I was told by my, by, by my controller when I went down that we wouldn't sleep in sleeping bags. That's bullshit, man. Like, I slept in a sleeping bag every fucking night at Ranger School. And honestly, I'm very happy I did because it was fucking freezing down there. And my ass, like, for the first couple of nights, I didn't I didn't have... For the first five nights at Darby, I didn't have a sleeping bag. So I was just fucking, like, laying on top of some shit. And, like, I was in a coat, you know what I mean? And it was, you know, it was okay. But, like, dude, man, you get in that fucking little fart sack and, like, you know, zip the world away and it's fucking warm and shit. Like, that is... That is money, man. Like, you want to be in a sleeping bag. So. But anyway, yeah. You'll get, you'll get done with Darby. You have your dog X. And you'll scarf food. And you'll head on the mountains. You'll get on a bus. Go up to Dahlonega, Georgia. Um, you know, it's the very bottom of the Appalachian Trail, pretty much. You'll actually see the Appalachian Trail when you're out in the field there. But. Essentially, mountains. They say. Mountains is the biggest bitch. And. To an extent, it's the hardest physically. By the way, you'll also get that eight-hour pass before you go to mountains, so you'll be able to take care of your shit, restock on a packing list, um, you know, get some real food, do laundry and shit. Um, it'll fly fucking by, make your phone calls and shit, you know, be like, yeah, I'm going to fucking mountains, awesome. And then, like, you know, make sure you're fucking back at wherever the fuck you need to be because, like, it is no shit, like, not fucking worth it to get through Darby and then get fucking recycled or fucking dropped out of ranger school for being fucking five minutes late to formation like they don't fuck around and they they will drop your ass like they look for that shit it's all about discipline so don't fucking fuck around with that at all so you get up to mountains and you'll go through a lot of the same old bullshit with the layout like you'll be running around for the first fucking couple fucking you know hours when you get, first get there doing the layout and shit but then you'll get thrown in your barracks and it, you know the barracks are pretty fucking nice you'll get a wall locker and a bunk and during techniques week you know, every night you'll report back here and you'll have probably some decent amount of time to like you know, clean yourself and fucking, you get your shit ready for the next day and like, kind of unwind, you know, it's not that bad, like, you'll, you'll get back during techniques week, probably like, midnight, and the next wake up will be like five, so you'll have like five fucking hours, which is like fucking like, all the time in the world at ranger school, you know, but that shit, it's cool, um, the first couple of days you'll do uppers and lowers of mountaineering, you know, the fucking knot test or the seven knots, you can look them shits up, I'm not... I sucked at tying knots. I, you know, I fucking... I botched that fucking test, but I, I got through eventually, so it's all good. But, yeah, fucking... You'll do the all the mountaineering crap, and to be honest with you, you don't even fucking use it in the field. It's just kind of, like, there to, to teach you something. You'll do, like, the rope bridge and all the transport systems, and you'll do a lot of rappelling. Um, you'll rappel off the fucking cliff face with a ruck on and shit, and that's fucking painful. Cause man, like it's just like you're inching your way down the fucking thing, and it's just fucking pulling your fucking shit, and like, oh, it's, yeah, it's a bitch. But you know, so that's it's kind of fun too. But you know, like when I was doing it, we was fucking raining, of course. So I was like, ah, fuck, this is not fun at all, you know. So we're doing on a slippery rock face with a ruck on and shit. Like they don't stop training for like, fucking damn near anything down there except lightning. Like, but it didn't lightning at all when I was there. So anyway, they'll do that shit, and you're like, fuck. 
you'll go down a mountain and you know have fun and repel and whatever the fuck like for like four days at, at the um this little place off Camp Merrill. Also, when you're fucking doing that rappelling off the cliff face, don't fucking fall backwards. Cause like I had a buddy, really good buddy of mine, who was fucking going down the cliff face and he just fucking fell fucking f- straight back over the wall. So he was fucking upside down with a rock on, you know, suspended about fucking a hundred feet above the ground and shit. And like everyone's fucking looking at him and he's just you know, this rucksack weighs a hundred pounds. It's like pulling his arms up and it's like you know he's like screaming in pain and shit. And it's like, dude, like, no one's helping him. Because, like, that's, like, they're like, oh, man, the RIs are loving it. They're like, this is entertaining as, as hell. So that guy, poor guy, was, like, you know, stuck there and fucking, you know, he had to fucking, it took him, like, half an hour to get the fuck down. But like, he was, like, literally, like, dead when he got down. It was it was rough. But that guy, you know, he's a great guy. I know him. But, yeah, like, don't, be careful when you're fucking, in other words, be careful when you're repelling. You know, be very sure-footed. Don't get all fucking squirrely and shit and then misstep and then fucking fall off the mountain. Like, it, don't do that shit. It ain't worth it. Again, focus and just be fucking very sure-footed. Don't listen to our eyes. They'll try to fuck with you. Especially me, because, again, I didn't know anything about fucking tying, not, like, you know, knots or repelling. And I was just like, fucking, you know, clip me in, boss. And the fucking guy's like, oh, I was like, you're going to fucking kill yourself with this knot. And I'm like, I know I am. That's why I want you to check it before I go the fuck down the mountain. So, you know, just just do it and whatever. Um, okay, what else? So you'll do that, and then you'll go to Mount Yona if it is not too cold. If it's the winter time, I was like the the last I was the last class to do uh, Yona for that for that cycle, and then it got too cold. But if if it's not too cold, you'll go up Mount Yona, and that's a that's a bit of a test. You'll go two miles up the mountain trail in 45 minutes, which it seems like not that bad, but to be honest with you, it fucking sucks. And that mountain's real steep. Uh, you'll start kind of in a formation, and then you know eventually like 10 minutes in they'll start kind of thinning out and shit and you want to just get the fuck up the mountain as quick as you can now i mean when i did it it was uh it was real painful like i got most of the way up and then like the last little stretch is a real gut check it's fucking steep as hell and i was fucking like i was sucking getting up that but yeah i made it but you just it's literally like it, it, you want to quit so bad because i've never really been mountaineering before and i'm like fuck well Again, I'll just go full retard. I just won't stop. And I didn't stop. You know, but like I was like fucking dying going up this mountain. And you know, eventually I got it. So um if you fail that ruck, you have to do it again the next morning, and then if you fail that you recycle. So don't fail it. Don't fail it the first time. Um What else? You'll get to the top of Mount Yoda and you'll do uh more freaking um Mountaineering on Mount Yona, yeah. I mean, you'll be you'll be you know repelling off more rock cliff faces on Mount Yona. You'll be mountain climbing and shit. It's kind of fun, but again, none of it's really like you don't really need to know any of it, and it's none of it's graded. So you just kind of like fucking have fun. It'll be cold as shit, and you know it, it's like you know survive the suck kind of. But yeah, it's not so bad. So you'll finish with that shit, and you'll go back, and then you'll start your fucking field problem. Um the field problem here, it's five days on, and then it's a day uh, off at rest, and then you'll get five more days on, and then that's that's fucking it. The MO here, you'll also be doing <coughs> um, platoon level missions. You'll be doing ambush and raid. So, um, and you'll be integrating as a platoon, which is you know, it, when I first my first platoon I was in, it wasn't it wasn't a good thing. You know, we didn't really work together well, so um, it's kind of rough. But anyway, you know, we had SOP time for about a week after, um, or like a few days, maybe three or four days, and you'll go out on this uh, airfield and do all your like practice stuff, and that's all well and good and shit. But um, yeah, you know, then and then it's the field time. Um, so when you're in the field, there's you know you'll do your planning and shit, and here's where you'll you'll be in the patrol base rather than the planning base. That's another big change. Um, the patrol bases, they're not for us. They weren't that strict on them because I think it was so fucking cold and it rained five out of ten days that we were in mountains so if we were really you know we, we were just sucking real bad so I think they kind of like cut us a lot of slack in patrol bases but you'll do your planning inside the patrol bases and shit and you know that shit kind of takes care of itself so again I'm not going to go over every fucking all the tra- I'm not going to teach you or train you stuff I'm just going to give you like kind of an insight on it uh, an insider scoop on what ranger school is actually like. That's what this is meant for. I'm not going to fucking teach you how to fucking do all the crap. Because, again, I, I passed, but 
you know, I don't, it's too hard for me to talk over here, and I didn't prepare something for that, so I'm just gonna fucking give you the, the scoop of, like, you know, what we actually did. So, mountains, the, the missions go like this, the planning phase, you'll do that shit, you'll step off around noon, and you'll be moving to the action zone portion. And you'll always receive contact. This is like the MO of mountains. You'll be fucking move, you know, moving slow as shit, and then you'll you'll take contact from one dude. And the idea is you want to like maneuver your platoon to engage him, and he's gonna fall back. He's gonna fucking run down the side of the mountain, and you're not gonna fucking catch him. So what you want to do is make sure he, you know, he's broken contact. Make sure it's clear, and then you want to fucking get right back on mission. Like you want to be quick because they'll call in fucking Artie Sims on you, and indirect fire and shit, and you'll be, you know. You'll hear the whistle and the incoming and all that shit, and it'll it'll suck. So <coughs> you want to get the fuck out of there after he's broken contact. Make sure the area is clear, and then continue on mission. You know what I mean, something you can fucking do. He shoots at you and runs away. Like you're not gonna fucking alter your mission to chain to chase this guy down. You're gonna fucking just go. Okay, is he shooting at us anymore? No. Okay, let's fucking continue on mission. You know, you go do your mission or whatever, and you're gonna be in terms of setting up an ORP. You're going to be rushed because the movement here is so fucking slow. You know, you're you're getting killed by these mountains. You're you're gonna be you're, you're almost be moving slow as shit, and you're gonna to get to your ORP and you're gonna have like no fucking time. You're not gonna be able to like recon it or set it in like the like how you're supposed to. But you have to take factors that'll mitigate the risk. So, you know, okay, it, you're taking on more risk by, you know, occupying an ORP by force. But what you can do is you can send out small recon teams. You know, 50 meters out this way on each leg, you say. And just, you know, scout the area out real quick. And then, you know, you can be like, all right, well, we know the enemy's not right here. So that looks good for the RIs. I mean, it's, again, it's more about um, the common sense principle rather than necessarily following everything by the freaking book. Because I'll say it to you a million times, this ain't Darby, this ain't Darby, you know, you're, you're done with that shit. So it's not as by the book. That still doesn't mean go fucking crazy. You still want to stick to the book as much as you can. But when it makes sense, deviate from it. You know, go try to make you know, it easier on yourself. So you'll do all that crap. You'll do your leader's recon of the objective. You'll set up however you tactically you want to set it up. And you'll conduct your actions on. One tip, uh, another tip I have for ambushes is that people, you know, they want to set their assault lines really far away from the fucking road, it seems like. You know, that makes sense. But considering mountains, you're up a fucking mountain. And down the mountain is a bunch of fucking bushes and shit. You know, so there's like the road, a bunch of bushes, and the mountainside, and then your fucking assault line. And then it gets dark. So... <clears throat> you'll be fucking, you'll initiate, and then, like, your assault line will have to move down that fucking mountain, and it will take fucking a while, because, like, you'll, it'll be pitch black, and you'll be moving down this fucking thing, and it'll probably be freezing cold out, so the guys will be moving slow anyway, it's just, like, nah, just, you know, don't set your guys too far off the fucking roof, that happened a lot, and, you know, I mean, like, that's one thing I saw, and I was like, why the fuck are we setting the line back so far, like, you know, set them up just a lot closer, you know, it just save, save yourself a lot of trouble, because it, it will kill your, your violence of action, it will kill your fucking violence faction. If it takes your fucking... I mean, your support by fire line won't be able to, to to keep the objective covered for fucking five minutes as your guys are moving down the hill. You know, it's, it should be... You know, all that shit should be... That objective should be fucking knocked out in about a minute. You know what I mean? Like, you guys should initiate fire, and your guys should be across that objective, like, quickly. You know what I mean? It should be fucking, like, snap your fucking fingers. Not like, all right, we'll initiate fire, and then ten minutes later our assault lines are here. No, that shit... That's no violence of action. So they'll get on you for that shit. So make sure you're fucking on top of it. But after that, yeah, you'll fucking do your fucking uh, actions on. They'll, they'll fucking our eyes will be like, all right, go get your shit, you know, back at the um, ORP and come out to the road usually or back to the objective. So go grab all your shit, come back. You'll do an AAR, probably like a foot check maybe. Um, and then basically it'll be, all right, give me the PL and, you know, here's the coordinates for the patrol base. And you'll march your ass off to a patrol base. You'll probably go through. You'll probably take a road. Sometimes we didn't take a road. I mean, most of the, like it was like two thirds of the time we would take a road to the patrol base. Uh, we move a couple clicks, and then you know we fucking set in. Um, so again, these these aren't that long on night movements, but they're they're it, you know it it sucks moving at night, especially when you're tired and cold. But you'll get used to it and you'll just do it. Um, you'll set the patrol base in. They usually would would leave us alone at the patrol base after we uh, we had established security and gotten all the priorities of, like the um, black and gold alternate patrol base sector sketches, you know, sh slit trench dug, all that crap. You know, once we got that stuff done, then they would be okay. Priorities to work, go for it, and then they would roll out usually. Um, so basically, at that point, it was like, all right, you can fucking put on your warm shit, your snivel, 
and you can eat and go to sleep, and that as long as you got like someone on the fucking open bolt weapons for fire guard, you're good. So they didn't, yeah, they didn't fuck with us too much in terms of like you know making it by the book. Like I, my controller, but I was sent down there was like you know they're gonna fucking get on you for patrol bases nonstop, and. I was like, shit, you know what I mean? Like, that's going to suck. But when I got down there, it was a different story. So, you know, I guess it could be, it's probably because of the weather. Because, it, it, like I said, guys were fucking really sucking. Like, guys, some guys got hypothermia and shit. And, you know, it's no joke. But, that's that. Um, so, yeah, after you do the patrol base and shit, you'll just start the next day. Um, we only got blown out of our patrol base once. And that happened in mountains. But, you know... They'll do it. They'll probably do it once just to fuck with you. They'll blow you out of the patrol base, and you'll run across the fucking mountains in the fucking darkness and fall all over the fucking place, and it's miserable and shit. Man, shit is it gets fucking stupid. Yeah, it's just like you're down there, and you're like you can laugh to yourself. You're like, this is fucking ridiculous, you know. But again, it's just it's it's ranger school, you know. You just gotta fucking put up with it. But yeah. So you'll do your time in the field, and then you'll come back in, do piers again, and then you'll fucking go, uh, you'll take a nice six-hour drive to, to, uh, Florida. So I'll talk about that in my next segment.